What is up guys, Yellow Gamer here, and today I'm bringing you guys episode 12 of my Mad 17 Connected Fancy Franchise Mode. Uh, in today's episode, I actually have simmed to the postseason. Now, I was 9-2 and two in the regular season. We finished the regular season 11-5 and five, because following my sim, uh, or th during the sim, we went 2-3, and three, but we were at about week 12, and we already guaranteed our spot as one of the top teams in the NFC. I had no worries about us making the playoffs. Um, and I realized we didn't really have any records that we were chasing after or anything like that. So I figured there was really no purpose of me continuing to play those last four regular season games. Uh, all it would really do is just prolong the inevitable, which would be us in the playoffs. So I just figured why not sim to the playoffs and start playing some games that actually are, are meaningful, you know. Because uh, those last few regular season games wouldn't have really counted for anything. So either way, you see we're just taking a look at my team. I just wanted to show you guys what the statistics of each of my players look like uh, at the end of the season. Because obviously... I figured you guys would probably be a little bit curious as to how these guys did. So here's a, a quick little look at these guys' individual stats. I figure most of these stats you guys probably already kind of got an idea for throughout the season. I showed you guys like 12 games. Uh, so like through this, you already kind of figured what their stat line was going to look like. Uh, but either way, in today's episode, we are going up against the Green Bay Packers, considering, of course, that this is a fantasy draft franchise. This will not be the actual Green Bay Packers lineup. Uh, but this is a very good team nonetheless. I actually noticed that uh, statistically they were 8th overall in the league in passing. Uh, so they kind of fit that same type of thing with Aaron Rodgers. They like to have a gunslinger mentality. They like to throw the ball downfield. And they have a pretty decent uh, receiving game in order to do that. They have Will Fuller who's obviously one of the better rookies in the, in the league. I believe he actually was second in offensive rookie of the year voting for the NFC behind Carson Wentz. Uh, so yes, Carson Wentz is offensive rookie of the year. And then they have uh, Tyler Eifer as well, who obviously is an absolute stud at the tight end position. But I believe, if I remember correctly, in this game, we do a pretty good job of shutting him down. But uh, that was definitely the more interesting matchup because we don't have th that great of linebackers. We don't have a very good D line either. So I was a little bit worried about how we we're going to get past this O line because they have a pretty nice one and how we're going to shut down Tyler Eifer because I don't really have linebackers that match up very well against him. Uh, but you see right here, they just try to give me that play action after a running play. We're not going to fall for that one, though. They're going to have to punt the ball in their first possession overall with the ball. Uh, Brock Os Osweiler is their quarterback. And right now in the NFL, he's considered one of the worst quarterbacks for any team, starting for any team. So I'm um, obviously coming into this game. I was looking forward to going up against him because obviously he's not doing that good in real life. I don't know if that really translates into Madden production, but... Um, I, I kind of figured that if we can get in his head a little bit, maybe hit him with a few blitzes, sack him a few times, we'd be able to get him out of his rhythm, and hopefully that would be enough for us to actually come out and win this game, because I know for a fact, based off their stats, they would be relying on their passing game, but right here, we're moving downfield, we're at the 24-yard line, and we see Rob Gronkowski over the middle, running to the left side through that slam, we're going to get him down to the 12-yard line, so 12 yards away from the end zone, actually in this next play, we're only going to be 8 yards away, we're looking to give AP the ball in this left part of the left part of the the field we're gonna try to get him to run up the middle and he's only gonna be able to go for a couple of yards there but after another quick run to get us down to the two we're gonna give it to ap one last time giving him that quick little flip to the right side of the field and he's gonna hit that right pylon to get us up seven to zero here in the first quarter so right here brock eyes while they're trying to hit us with that fake pump we're not falling for that though our defense attack was gonna blast up the middle that's gonna be um, i can't remember his name it's, it's something ruben but he's gonna blast up the middle and sack brock oswell right there for the first sack actually for our defense in the game but it doesn't actually end up getting in Brock Osweiler's head at all. As of the very next play, he's going to check a 44-yard bomb down the left field sideline to uh, Will Fuller for his first completion of the game. An absolute bomb downfield. And then the very next play, once again, he's going to hit a 40-yard pass this time. So in two passes, he has totaled 84 yards. It's the only two completions of the game. Obviously, we can't have defensive breakdowns like that if we intend on winning this game, especially not on back-to-back -back possessions or back-to-back -back plays. It's a little bit embarrassing. And if that's not bad enough, on his third straight pass, he's going to go for at least 20 yards. He's going to throw that one down to the 40-yard line. Uh, so obviously when you do something here defensively, you try to shut down these big passes that they're going for, these big yardage situations. Uh, it's not looking very good, but right here, once again, they're going to run the ball up the middle. Go for about 20 yards right there. So these are some little things that we have to work on. Uh, the thing is we're shutting them down when we have to, but they're getting uh, just a few big plays that are really uh, kind of messing up my defense. So right here, it's going to throw it over to the right side. Luckily, though, this is enough to avoid them from actually getting to a first down. So they're going to be at 4th and 14. 32-yard field goal. They're actually going to be 49 yards when you add the 17. Uh, but they have a 12 mile per hour wind going against them and it happens to really mess up their kicker as he's going to miss that dustin hopkins is going to miss that by about three yards to the right now the funny thing is dustin hopkins that's not the only bad field goal he has today he has a series of very very bad kicks bad field goals bad kickoffs bad punt returns or not bad, not punt returns but bad punts too because i believe he's the punter as well uh, and all around their special teams unit really was the only noticeable flaw on their team i believe their team was really good but they missed a lot of field goals and they had a lot of very very disgustingly bad punts 
and that's really what we capitalize on. It's right here. We're going to look over to the left side of the field. There's nobody playing that flat route, and we are going to have Adrian Peterson jump into the left side of the end zone right by the left pylon for his second touchdown in the game, his second total touchdown. He got a rushing one the first time, and his first receiving touchdown right there. So two total touchdowns for Adrian Peterson. We're looking for him once again, and once again, he's going to total some more receiving yards, get down to about the 45. He's going to get about 20 yards on that reception. So we're looking over the middle this time. We see it. Rob Gronkowski is going to go down for another 10 or so yards to bring us down to about 38 yards away from the goal line. As right here, we're going to throw one up to Adrian Peterson for the HB screen, but we're not going to be able to complete that ball. And in fact, they are going to get an interception. And Adrian Peterson, for some reason, is not fast enough to track him down. I was very upset when this happened. Uh, it didn't really make any sense to me because Adrian Peterson, being one of the fastest running backs in the league, obviously because of that, you have to assume he's one of the fastest overall players in the league. For some reason, was not able to track down that cornerback or linebacker, whoever happened to intercept that ball. And I just thought it was a little bit unrealistic. But right here, we're going to get a pretty nice pass over to the right side of the field to Demarius Thomas. Uh, but sadly, that's the only real completion we're able to total down for this possession. So we're going to have to punt the ball down. But luckily, we have Pat McAfee, one of the best punters in the game. He's going to blast this one right to the one-yard line. So they're one yard away from their own end zone. So obviously, we're going to blitz up the middle, see what we can do. And we happen to pile... They're running back Jordan Hill in the back of end zone, and that's enough to get us an extra two points on that safety. And not only that, but of course, they're going to have to punt the ball back to us. This ball, though, they're going to absolutely boot the hell out of this punt. And so that's going to go to the back of the end zone. So we're going to have to stop and start our possession at the 25-yard line. But sadly, although we got the ball back, it doesn't really last in our favor for very long because we're going to throw a pick on the very first play of this possession with Carson Winston. That's not bad enough. They're going to take it back to the 25-yard line themselves. So they are 25 yards away from our end zone. Obviously, this is not a situation we want to be in. They're now going to run the ball back up the middle. And we're going to have to take this guy down three yards away from the end zone. Jordan Hill is getting some crazy yards. You see five rushes, 62 yards. That's averaging more than 12 yards a carry. But luckily, right here on third and goal, we're going to blast up the middle and prevent them from getting in the end zone. We're going to get a, a three and out on, the, on their or on our three-yard line. So a series of very nice plays there to avoid them from getting a touchdown. And there we are going to only be down by one point. But sadly here, we're going to start our possession fairly bad. We're going to be 20 or 20, our, our 21 yard line. We're looking at what we can do. And I'm looking at Demaryius Thomas hitting the slant. We're getting some extra time by scrambling out right. And we see Demaryius Thomas has no safety on that right side of the field. And we know how fast Demaryius Thomas is. He's going to break away from the cornerback, break away from that safety. who's trying to lean up and catch up to him. And that's going to be enough for Demaryius Thomas to get a touchdown catch here for 79 yards. And that's going to be enough also to put us up by by five and eventually seven following a successful two-point conversion so obviously we are going to try to put this ball or put this ball game away right here we are only up by seven but we're going to chuck the ball to the other team once again that's gonna be our third interception in the game with Carson Wentz uh, just a very frustrating performance nothing really seemed to be falling my way we had open receivers they just weren't cutting their routes very well I was making some poor decisions in terms of where to throw the ball and when to throw the ball and just a, a large series of things were not going in our favor and so we're going to give the Green Bay Packers one last opportunity to win this game. They're 4th and 5. They're 17 yards away from the end zone. They're going to go for it right here. I'm surprised they didn't take the field goal. There's 6 minutes left. But they think the best option is for them to go for it. They're looking to the left side of the end zone though. But Xavier Rhodes says no sir to that completion right there. And he's going to get an interception. His first interception of the game. His first interception of these playoffs. And we're going to prevent them from having any chance. At least on that possession to tie this game back up. They're going to try here on this next possession though. To do the same thing. But once again we are going to shut them down. This time with a fumble on Marcus Wheaton to prevent them from getting any yardage. And because of that, we're going to get great field position, which we're going to capitalize into and make a field goal out of it. So we're going to be up by 10 points. And after that, after being up by 10 points with about four minutes left, they consistently were just not able to tie any good possessions together. And it really was just, it was just kind of a ball game at that point. Uh, it was pretty easy for us to walk away with the win following uh, that last fumble and following that last field goal. Because once they were down by two possessions, they started to struggle a little bit and they started to kind of force some things. Uh, which made it fairly easy for us. But that's going to be the end of this episode, the end of the playoffs, so if, or the end of the first game of the playoffs. So if you guys enjoyed, please click that like button below. Make sure to comment your opinion of this series. Make sure to comment your opinion of me stemming to the playoffs, what you think about all that. See, if, or just tell me if you're excited for some upcoming playoff games. And lastly, subscribe if you have not already to stay tuned to this series and other series I got going on my channel. I want you guys just to enjoy these stat lines as we come to an end. I really hope you guys appreciated this first one. I hope you guys appreciated the video. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.